History is an endless sea of complexities. It's hard to know where to start and where to stop when one is aiming to explain a specific historical event. In this video, I'll examine some ideas from historians and theorists, and then explain why video games, more than any other medium, is well positioned to investigate historical circumstances, and rewrite them if necessary. Some historians and enthusiasts of history tend to describe it as a series of events, one happening after the other, in a chain of causes and effects. This view of history is called linear history. But the truth is that our mental limitations impose on us this method of building narratives to explain the past. Historical events are always the result of thousands upon thousands of big and small causes leading to them in what is known as the butterfly effect. Small events combined together with enough time could lead to big consequences. By our nature, it's hard for us to simply admit that we don't know something or that it's hard for us to grasp. So we have to reduce these complex events into a set of mini episodes. I like to think of the First World War as the perfect example to debunk this method of reading history. The typical narrative we usually hear is that Gavrilo Princip, a Yugoslav nationalist, shot Archduke Franz Ferdinand, the heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne, and killed him. His assassination in Sarajevo precipitated Austria-Hungary's declaration of war against the Kingdom of Serbia. Russia mobilized its military westwards in support of their ally. So did Germany in support of Austria-Hungary. The French were allied with the Russians, so the Germans had to declare war on them as well. On Germany's way to France, they conquered Belgium which led to Great Britain declaring war on the Germans. It's easy to reduce a global war that took four bloody years and more than 16 million lives into five or six bullet points and say, this is how it has unfolded, and start picking Franz Ferdinand's assassination as an origin point and the Kaiserschlacht battle as the beginning of the end. The complexity of these events is far more confusing than we can perceive. In his brilliant book, Sleepwalkers, How Europe Went to War in 1914, historian Christopher Clarke takes the readers on a journey into the pre-war period. He brilliantly explains all the complexities of the geopolitical relationship between all these countries and how the war could have happened in many other scenarios. How nations and people in these countries saw each other. And only after 600 pages of adding questions to our minds, Clark ends the book with the Sarajevo assassination. In a way, he is telling other historians, you picked the wrong starting point. Maybe there is no starting point at all in these circumstances. Each element is connected with thousands of other pieces. Once past events end and the dust settles, we see the final results and start to pick the elements we clearly recognize to build a narrative around them with a heavy dose of hindsight bias. This is not limited to the First World War, but look at other major events like the spread of the internet, the American Civil War, the Reformation, the Tulip Mania, the Iran hostage crisis, the Hindenburg disaster, the Marshall Plan, Apollo 11, and other important events. They're all reduced into narratives consisting of a chain of events devoid of any complexity. Here is exactly where I think video games are very well positioned to show the complexity that is lacking from all the other mediums. Altair, the main character in the first Assassin's Creed game, is a member of the Assassin's Group led by Hassan ibn al-Sabah, which has the aim of attacking both the leaders of the Crusaders and Saladin's army in order to rewrite the geopolitical map of the region. The game has its drawbacks from a historical point of view, but it brilliantly portrayed the lives of people living daily in Damascus or Jerusalem. You can walk down a road and hear a preacher lecturing people about the dangers of Saladin's army. Has he gone mad? He has found the strength to stand in defense of our great civilization. Or hear two guys chatting about the latest political events. It's these tiny details that are missing from history books. No historian would take you into a 12th century tiny house in Acre where you could hear a family discussing daily events. 
Altair in Assassin's Creed would see people being abused in their daily lives by soldiers, women being robbed, and many tiny forms of aggression that make you, the player, slowly, in a subconscious way, show some understanding of how people are forming their collective opinions on a topic. Alamut, the book which Assassin's Creed is based on, brilliantly tells the story of the assassins, but it focused on the leader of the group, Hassan al-Sabah and his army, and there was no room to expand on that universe. Here is where Assassin's Creed cleverly surpassed the book by showing you the whole region of that nation at that period of time. The player could see an event in Damascus, then travel to Jerusalem to hear what people on the streets were thinking about it. Creators could easily throw hundreds of butterfly effects into a game to enrich the historical context of an event without taking away from the final product. In comparison to that, a film is restricted by time, a TV show is confined to its plot, and a book with a limited number of pages focuses only on the bigger events. Games, on the other hand, allow the player to spend hours exploring the Cattedrale di Santa Maria di Fiore in Florence, or relive the famous battle of Operation Michael in the First World War as many times as they like, and from different perspectives. In history, you would have a historical materialist who would be interested in studying labour, production and the economy, while a structuralist will attempt to illustrate common basic structures in language and thinking. In a video game, both could be merged and intertwined together effortlessly to emerge the player into a historical context. The last way I see games being better qualified at telling history is the idea of alternative histories. Nassim Taleb in his intelligent book Fooled by Randomness opened my eyes for the first time to the idea of re-examining historical events by looking at the alternatives and not just at the end results. He states, I start with the platitude that one cannot judge a performance in any given field, war, politics, medicine, investments, by the results, but by the costs of the alternative. Such substitute courses of events are called alternative histories. He continues, One can illustrate the strange concept of alternative histories as follows. Imagine an eccentric tycoon offering you $10 million to play Russian roulette, to put a revolver containing one bullet in the six available chambers to your head and pull the trigger. Each realization would count as one history for a total of six possible histories of equal probabilities. Five out of these six histories would lead to enrichment. One would lead to a static, that is, an obituary. The problem is that only one of these histories is observed in reality. There are thousands of alternative history novels, movies and TV shows, but each one of them deals with only one alternative without any dynamic involvement of the viewers in exploring all the possible alternatives. Video games is a dynamic medium where the course of events could be set by the player. David Cage is showing us some of the potentials of exploring these alternatives in his games. One day, I would like to see the same concept being used and expanded in historical video games, where the history that is observed in reality is one of several outcomes the player can make. I want game creators to put us, the players, in the front seat to explore all these possibilities. Video games could make us think about what Martin Luther King once said, We are not makers of history, we are made of history. In a video game, we could be both. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. I also want to hear from you and engage with you in the comment section below. See you soon.